Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a closer look at why Overlord just works as an anime, as a story and as a world. But before we're going to do so, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube Thanks function for making one-time donations. Also please check out my newest video about cat girls, it's linked down in the video description. And with that said, let's start. Now first and foremost we have to take a look at Ainz, the overlord of the great tomb of Nazarick, and why he just works so well in the general setting. Simply speaking, the author of Overlord, Maruyama Samar, knows exactly when to show him and his awesome powers and when to hide him. At the start of the Overlord series, that is for the first three books, Ainz Urgon was the main protagonist of the story. We followed him the absolute majority of the entire time and most pages and scenes are just dedicated to him. We learn and contextualize the new world to his own undead eyes. And all of that then culminates in the epic battle against a superior foe, Sheltier Bloodfallen, who had been beaten thanks to Ainz Hulgon's greater knowledge and superior battle strategy, before Ainz briefly lost the fight thanks to the moment of hesitation when facing Sheltier, thus showing us that this undead with regulated emotions still has moments of pity and empathy when it comes to his children. It's like when Ozymandias could read the subtle facial expressions of Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen, and thanks to the aid of Aura, who understood what Ainz Ulgon went through, Shelty also got distracted, and thus Ainz was able to catch himself and win the fight. Which brings us to the next point, the side characters. After Volume 3, we follow the Lizard Men. Basically, all of the story is told from the viewpoint of these side characters, with just a very few exceptions. For the first time, we see and learn how Ainz Ulgon is seen by New World as. It's like watching the invasion of the White Walkers from Westeros' point of view, while still knowing the exact thoughts and motivations of the Lich King. The cast of characters is nearly impossible wide. Henry and her goblin troop, the dwarves, dragons and Quagoa, the Empire, the Kingdom, Irantel, the Holy Kingdom, Slain and many more places hold so many characters. And this is just the new world. Just take a look at the Great Tomb of Nazarick. It feels so organic and alive. Despite the characters being literally written as self-aware NPCs, still bound to the will of a player. And all of this is done in a hard power system, where every NPC was created by characters from the book itself, which is even harder to write. And yet still so rewarding when little glimpses of the mysterious friends of Ainz will shine through. Yuri Alpha, Aura or Touch Me. Overlord can shine such a bright light on its white cast because every single one of them is able to reflect light like the most clear of diamonds. And with weaker characters battles suddenly become more tight and more equal and therefore way more intense. The Battle of Climb vs. the Illusion Maniac is a great example here, logically explained by the difference in gear during the first and their second battle. And you start to root for these side characters. Sooner or later you will start to root for these side characters, for them to win or, and this is the second point, to at least survive in the merciless world of Overlord. There being a cute anime girl, or deeply in love, or having a tragic backstory, or fighting for a just cause, doesn't give you anything. In Overlord, might makes right, and the power of love and friendship counts for nothing. And this is how Eins is able to not only kill hostages, but to then explain to a grieving father why this was necessary and how he is at fault for not protecting his kids. It is dark, but also 
a very deep written scene that can basically only be found in Overlord. In terms of contemporary anime, and since the world has consequences, every action could lead to a great reward or to great agony alike, thus every little detail counts. And speaking of details, Overlord is able to work like a beautiful Swiss watch, because every character, be it a small side character, a floor guardian, or Ein Solgorn himself, is like a gear of a different size. But despite the sheer number of gears and the differences in size, they are all fitting perfectly together and thus the story is able to work in such great harmony that it sometimes feels unreal how precise every single gear fits into one another. Seeing how cleverly the extremely low rich world and its many many characters are able to play off of another is something you only get in a very few good books. The world, its lore and the way it is used lets anyone who so wishes dive into a near endless abyss of awesomeness. You can lose yourself in this world and in all of its little detail and that is simply beautiful. And last but not least, the girls are awesome. This is how good fan service is handled and done. I mean compare Lupus Regina or the other Pleiades to let's say Yoko Littner or the two perpetually naked people from Fairy Tale. They are also very endearing, engaging and also quite dangerous without coming off as dull dolls, be it run under particular interests, the Pleiades, Blue Roses, other side characters or the insane amount of mates Overlord throws at you. Everyone can pick a favorite to their own specific interest. And Overlord even has bunny girls. And even shelled here, Peru Ronchino's walking fetish collection has full plate armor and doesn't dress herself with like one square inch of clothes. This is expertly done fan service right here. I mean everyone can create an attractive girl with less clothes, but Overlord is on a whole other level, all without showing too much or too little skin. And that's precisely why Overlord just works as a story. And with all of that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash Dash Dash, Arder Daddy Arder, Bad Guy Ye. Bad Boy Toad 316, B. There, Ben C, Brandon D, Chrissy, Crowley 0221, Sia, Crystal Prime, Dead Slime, Death is Mercy, Deathless Dragon Lord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devin Downen, Ding Dong, Duck Wagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Thiranshivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Rhinomir, Cune Karakos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T.E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Zinukai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.